Hello students, uh, we are going to explore 2.2 today, dividing fractions. Uh, I want you to take a look at this little comic that I put on here. Um, you can kind of see, you know, this little, little girl right here is looking at her little brother's sandwich and she's saying, wait a minute, why'd PJ get four sandwiches and I only got two? Now, if you're comparing both of those sandwiches, you can see that they're the same thing, but the way that they're divided and it makes a fraction, you're going to, you know, it, it seems like there's more there. So um, we're exploring this idea of fractions and dividing today. And uh, hopefully it makes sense by the time we get done. So here we go. Okay, to begin with today, we're going to be um, looking at your bell work. So um, here we go. It is... We've done this before. We're talking about exponent, exponent form, the expanded form, and the standard form. So um, a couple of these I'll just remind you of. I'm not going to do everything on here. I am going to just show you that 4 to the 0 power, if we were going to expand that, how could we do that? Could we expand 4 to the 0 power? No, we can't. So it isn't even possible to expand it. So... I'm just going to show, you know, it's not even possible. The standard form would be 1. So, um, yeah, that's that's the answer to that one. Now, let's come up here, and I will do the, ex the, the standard form for 4 to the second power right here. So, a lot of you are thinking, oh, yep, this is 8. No, it is not 8. <laughs> it is 4 times 4, which is... 16. That is the standard form. So if I was going to show it in expanded form, it would be 4. And I'm going to start using these dots for multiplication. So 4 times 4 is the expanded form. And the standard form is 16. Uh, let's. I'm going to let you do the 4 to the first power. Um, number 2. Write and solve an expression for the following situation. 8 times the sum of 3 and 5. Whoa. So we, we kind of have to think about how words translate into mathematical symbols here. So eight times the sum of, well, I know what eight times means. You know, it means eight times. What, how would I show the sum of three and five? Well, sum means add. So, I, you know, I'm going to go three plus five. Well, how can 8 times that 3 plus 5? Well, that's where parentheses become awesome. They help us to group things. So if I wanted to show the sum of 3 and 5, put it in parentheses. And then, if you remember, we taught that we don't even have to have this 8 times here. That gets a little clunky and confusing when you're doing mathematics. So what you do is you just put the 8 right here. Remember, an, a number by the parentheses means it multiplies it. So if you were following the order of operations for this, you would do the 3 plus 5 first, and then you would times the 8 of whatever you get inside. So um, it wants you to write and to solve it. So I'm going to let you determine what that equals. Um, I also think you guys can handle number 3, some trial and error here. So you're going to put the parentheses somewhere... And you're going to make, it has to equal six at the end. So give that one a try. Uh, when you're done with your bell work, well, hit pause right now. And when you're done with your bell work, you can move on to the next, uh, you can hit play again. All right, so there is quite a bit of notes for this section. So I'm gonna go over this reciprocal um, really quick. Um, so, two fractions whose product are one are called reciprocals. Now, you know, a lot of people think, oh, reciprocals are just flipping it. Well, it, that is true. We are flipping a fraction over, so it equals one. That's what the whole idea of doing a reciprocal and what it does mathematically for you is it makes it so you can get one makes it all work. So 
Um, on this one, you can see that it's done for you. You can also see that this one is done for you. What it's not showing is that this written as a fraction, this just the regular number five, would be five over one. And then you can see that they flipped it over and turned it into one fifth, so that's why it equals one. Um, let's take a look at some of these down here. It wants us to write the reciprocal of some of these numbers. So we're going to go five over three, five over nine. And so another word for, um, if you were going to show an action for what a reciprocal means, it means flip it over. So this number right here is six over one, so we would write it as one over six. So really kind of a simple idea um, mixed numbers are a little bit different. If you remember, we have to go, when we have a mixed number, we have to turn it into an improper fraction before we can reciprocate it or, you know, flip it over. So 7 times 3 plus 1, that's 22. That's where that came from. And then over 3, so the reciprocal is 3 over 2. So they just flipped it over. And remember, the whole point of that is because 22 thirds times 3 over 22 equals 1. So that's the whole point of why we do it and why it works. When we're dividing a fraction, we have to have it equal 1 before it'll work. That's why we do reciprocal. So change an improper fraction, then write it. All right, so let's do this one. 5 times 3 is 15 plus 4 is 19. And then we just bring that denominator over and we get 19 fifths. Then we can flip it. So we flip it over. So the 5 comes up here, the 19 goes down there. So 5 19 And you can see if I was to times 19 times 5 and 5 times 19, we would get the same thing, which means it would equal 1. That's the whole point of this. So give number 2 a try, and I'm going to pause this. And then you, when you do, after you do this, hit play again, and we'll see what you get. All right, so when you do eight, seven times eight plus four, you get 58, and then you bring the seven over, then you flip it over, you get seven 58s. There you go. So I'm going to shrink this guy down now. We'll look at the other page. The other page has to do with how do we divide fractions? And we're gonna kind of introduce you to the keep it, change it, flip it. And maybe you learned that in fifth grade. Maybe this is new to you, but we're going to do keep it, change it, flip it. And what that means is when we are dividing a fraction, that's what we want to do. We keep the first fraction the same. If it's a mixed number, you do have to change it into an improper fraction first. Then we're going to change the division sign to a multiplication sign. And then we're going to take that second fraction and we are going to flip it. So, Let's explore that just a little bit. My gas tank is two-thirds full, a trip to the beach. Sorry about that, my phone rang in the middle of me doing this. So let's take a look at this. My gas tank is two-thirds full, a trip to the beach, uses one-sixth of a tank. How many times can I go to the beach before I run out of gas? So what it's saying here is we have two-thirds divided by... 1 sixth. Okay, so that's what it's saying there. So when it wants us to write an equation, that's pretty much the same thing as interpreting it. So we're going to go 2 thirds divided by 1 sixth equals, that's an equation always has an equal sign. So that's why we're putting that as an equal sign right there. Now we want to keep it, change it, flip it. So we're going to keep the first fraction, 2 thirds. Then we're going to change it by changing this symbol to a multiplication. And then we're going to flip this second fraction or reciprocate it. So we're going to turn it into 6 over 1. Now, from here, there's a few things that you can do. Um, you can do the cross simplification right here if you want to. or And there's no right or wrong here, guys. I think a lot of students think, oh, no, I have to simplify it before I multiply it. If you want to multiply and then simplify, that's fine. Or if you want to simplify and then multiply, you can do that too. So I'm just going to multiply. 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times 1 is 3. And now I'm going to simplify this. Another way of looking at 12 over 3 is 12 divided by 3. 
So if I take 12, well, let's, let's do it the way that I think is the most uh, helpful to you. So I'm going to go like this, 12 and 3. And what number can I pull out? A 3. And what's left on top is 4 and 1. So if I wrote that as a fraction, it would be 4 over 1 or 1. Oh, I'm sorry, 4, not 1. So you could go to the beach four times before you ran out of gas if you had two-thirds of a tank and it takes one-sixth of a tank to get to the beach. So, kind of cool. So how many one-fourth cup servings are in four and a half? And now this is where I'm actually going to leave this one until tomorrow's lesson. So I'm going to take this and I'll do this on tomorrow's lesson. So move on to the next slide now. Okay, so here is the practice. I know we're kind of doing this flip-flop from what we usually do. We usually make these little puzzles the assignment, but we're going to actually make this one into the practice. So we're going to work this one through with you. So I'm going to take a look at this question first. And these are all div divide symbols. They're not add symbols. So um, we're dividing. So if you can remember, we talked about keep it, change it, flip it. So I'm going to keep the first fraction, change the division into multiplication, and flip it, So or reciprocate it. So we have this. Then all I have to do is multiply. 3 tenths. Does 3 tenths simplify? No, it doesn't. So I am done. So this is my answer for G. So now I'm going to come down here to the puzzle and see if I can find 3 tenths. There it is. And what letter did it go with? G. So I'm going to come over here and go, you know what? Here is G. There we go. So let's go on to H. Let's do H. H says 1 fourth divided by 3 eighths. So I'm going to go 1 fourth. Keep it change it, flip it. Now you can probably, some of you that are really good at identifying multiplication tables, you can see that these numbers right here, they, are, they have a common factor. So you could simplify here. Or you can just simplify after you multiply. 1 times 8 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. Now you can use cake method to simplify. Well, 4 goes into both of them, so 2 and 3. So I know that this is now 2 thirds. Okay, so now let's see where 2 thirds is on our wheel. H is 2 thirds, so here we go. So looking for 2 thirds. Hmm. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to find it, and especially, there it is. So H is 2 thirds. So I'm going to write an H right here. All right, so I am going to pause this and then fill in the answers to this. I want you to also pause the video and try some of these out. So maybe do like four of them and then hit play and see if you have the same thing that I have. And then um, pause it again and then try some more. So try, these, try the rest of these out on your own and see what you get. Okay, I just had a really good idea. I would like you to do this on the button puzzle, and I want to see if you get the right answer. If you can get the right answer and bring it up to Mr. Roberts, I will give you extra credit. So if you're watching this video, you're doing what you're supposed to. If you can come up and show me the answer to this, uh, to this puzzle, I will give you extra credit. Okay, so here is your assignment. Um, before we look at numbers 1, 2, and 3, I want to look at 4, 5, and 6 here. So it says write reciprocals. Now remember, reciprocal, and if it, you want to write this in parentheses right here, flip it. That's what we're doing is flipping it. So I'm going to look at number 4 here. Number 4 is write the reciprocal, so I'm going to flip it. 6 fifths. I'm done. So that's what you have to do on 4, 5, and 6. Uh, looking at numbers 1, 2, and 3, um, oh, before I go on, number 6 here. Remember, you have to change this mixed number into an improper fraction before you flip it. 
Now, let's go up to numbers one, two, and three. Um, let's do number one. So it says divide. So we're going to go keep it, change it, flip it. Now multiply. So I get 35 over 12. Now that is an improper fraction. So we have to do something with that improper fraction. We never end our fraction answers in an improper fraction. Yes, sometimes we have to change um, a mixed number into an improper fraction to deal with it. But as we end a problem, we always have to ask ourselves that question. Is it an improper fraction? This one happens to be improper, so we have to change it. We have to change it back. So 12 goes into 35 twice. Almost three times, but only twice. We get 24. So we get 1 and 1. We get 11 twelfths. I know that I went way over onto number 2. But this right here is the answer to number 1. All right, so I think you can handle numbers 1 through 6 now. Let's look at number 7. Fill in the box to make the equation equal one. So really, I'm going to give you a hint. Reciprocal. Got to do a reciprocal on that. Evaluate the expression and write your answer in simplest form. I'm going to give you a hint on this one. You have to divide before you add. That is the order of operations. Okay, so you have to do that division and then add the three-fourths. Looking at number nine, you have two thirds of a pizza. You divide the remaining pizza into four equal pieces. So I'm gonna write this one out for you. So you got two thirds divided by four. And to help you out, four over one, because we can change a whole number into a fraction by putting it over one. Now this one says, how many times longer is the baby alligator than the baby gecko? I wanna see if you can do that one on your own. That one's a little bit challenging because they throw that word times in there, but don't get confused. We're still using division. Um, okay, guys, give this a shot. If you do have questions, feel free to ask your teacher and we'll, be, uh, we'll help you out. Um, till next time.